So a question that I get asked a lot is how to effectively navigate the at times dicey areas inherent to reviewing stuff on YouTube. And the most dicey area tends to be preserving your content's right to exist at all by way of the easily and overly abused YouTube copyright system. So that'll be the bulk of this conversation, followed by some more broadly applicable insights from yours truly, since there's a lot of people out there who either make PR and Toku content, or perhaps want that avenue open for them down the line. So hopefully this video serves as a valuable resource to all of you, given everything I have been forced to learn over my many years of doing the thing that I do. And even if you're someone who isn't especially interested in any of that, maybe you'll enjoy hearing a bit of behind the scenes details anyway. Now, there's a lot of places that we can start with a topic like this, but let's bring it to the roots first by talking about how you can edit videos that, usually but not always, escape the auto detection slash content ID system that YouTube utilizes. In the now, those checks are part of the video upload process, but since I haven't run into a claim specifically from that somewhat recent edition, I can't guarantee that this will always keep your head above water. But the bigger point here is that if you're making reviews, reactions, compilations, fan films, parodies slash fan dubs, or anything that could fall under the doctrine of fair use, and we'll dig into that more later, then any type of copyrighted footage that you use should be edited in such a way that it doesn't play continuously for more than 10 or so seconds. That's not some officially posted hardline number, just a very conservative underestimate based on my experiences. You could run a little bit longer, but some companies are a bit more finicky about that than others. To keep things really tight, I tend to limit my edits to closer to 8 seconds, if not shorter, and I tend to go even tighter on the rare occasions I utilize trailer footage or music videos, because the claims made on those tend to be even more draconian. The pre-edited parts of my various videos that you're seeing right now is a perfect example of this. If some of these scenes had run too long without cutting to another one, Hasbro Now, sometimes Toei Still, and Saban before that would have had their bots snipe that timestamp and prevent my video from being viewed in, for some strange reason, all of Southeast Asia and also Japan. This would also prevent me from monetizing that video, and ad revenue would instead go to the claimant. So when you're editing your own videos, keep all of that in the back of your head. Alright, so now you've got yourself an idea for a kick-ass video. The script is typed and proofread, the recording is done, and the editing is keeping you out of range of content ID. Fantastic. However, manual claims can still occur even if your editing is pristine and you don't even use copyrighted music. Put a pin in that one too because that's a whole other conversation. So if that happens, what is your recourse? What I found in many of the content creation spaces I frequent is that a lot of people are fearful of going through the process of defending their videos, which is understandable. YouTube throws out a lot of scary and seemingly complex jargon like counter notification and legal action. What's more, YouTube demands things like your address and other bits of contact info should you dispute and or appeal a video, while you don't get the same transparency from the claimant. At best, you'll get an email address that will ignore you. But I'm here to tell you, I have battled over 70 copyright claims, including two on the same video for some dumb reason, and nobody has ever come close to embarrassing themselves by trying to sue me. And the person who copyright claimed my Mewtwo Strikes Back review was so confident that he was in the right. It was comical. The amount of self-control I had to muster to not message him back when YouTube sided with me what a time. But I digress. The point is, with a little bit of knowledge, not even a lot of it, anyone can navigate the ins and outs of fair use and the pillars thereof, and that will apply for both copyright claims and copyright takedown notices. So let me explain the difference there before digging deeper into fair use. A copyright claim won't always impact the viewership of your video, but as I alluded to, there are times when your videos can be geo-blocked in some countries, or even all countries. Toei is guilty of the sooner, though Toei Animation is a bigger fan of the latter, as many much bigger channels can attest to. At that point, it's functionally no different from a takedown request, except without the strike on your channel. So just focusing on the claims that retain video viewability, a claimant will run ads on your video in almost all situations, as well as be able to track some data on it. But I've never claimed anyone else's videos, so I have no idea what kind of data they receive. 
If this happens, you can file a dispute. Sometimes companies will reject the dispute the first time around, but keep in mind that this isn't always because your argument is wrong or your video is in the wrong. That part of the process is automated a lot of the time anyways, so what do you do if they reject your initial dispute? In that case, you can send an appeal, in where you basically have to make the same argument you made in your dispute, except this time someone might actually pay attention to it. At that point, the claimant can either choose to back down or pursue a takedown request, which would put a copyright strike on your channel. Now that does sound scary, and sometimes you receive an even more intimidating countdown where they give you 7 days to rescind your claim and your video won't count as a strike. This is where the counter notification comes in. A counter notification is basically where you make the exact same argument a third time, but now the claimant either has to provide proof of legal action taken against you, or YouTube will force them to release their claim. They only have a week to do this, and most companies will just run down the clock because any sane company isn't going to sue you over a YouTube video unless your argument is fraudulent or you're actually posting a whole movie or episode or the like. You're on your own at that point. Now, a copyright strike is essentially an advanced version of a claim. This means that the claimant essentially skips the steps associated with a copyright claim and issues a takedown request immediately. And that means a counter notification is your only recourse, where the same fair use argument would apply, the seven days come and go, and YouTube will give you your video back, though not always on the seventh day, sometimes it takes eight or nine. As for the fair use argument itself, to make it easier for all of you to potentially use it as a resource, I've added the four pillars thereof, as well as the general outline I use to address them for disputes, appeals, and counter notifications as a pinned comment in the, well, comments, of course. Remember not to copy this verbatim. Make adjustments as necessary to account for the specifics of your content, and if you feel like there's more you need to know to make your case, learn it. If you look up the doctrine of fair use, you can find plenty of historical examples of it being defended and upheld in the court of law. However, and this is very important, I operate in the US, and I know not everyone who watches me is from here. So in addition to all of this, you'll want to look into the particulars of your own country's laws prior to making any claims about fair use, especially since as of writing this, you'd be surprised by how few countries have a comparably robust framework for understanding copyright exemptions. But even if the copyrighted work comes from Japan, for example, a company operating there would need to approach my content by how YouTube and my country's court system define the defense of it. That's the primary reason why that aforementioned Pokemon review is still up despite ShowPro's pleas to the contrary. For those reasons and more, I've included a link to the wiki article on fair use, as it references a number of great sources including how this all shakes out internationally. Now, if all of that sounded like a taxing, dense, overly messy, and overly complicated process, it's because it is. Even for people who know every single one of these steps and, like me, have been through every single one of these steps multiple times, it's a lot to handle. Just a couple years ago, it might have taken three whole months of disputing, being ignored, appealing, being ignored, and forcing someone's hand just to resolve a claim on one video. Dealing with multiple claims is not only more arduous, but your channel will get taken down by the three strike rule even if you're currently appealing said strikes. If those strikes get rescinded, then your channel will of course be restored, but even the thought of losing so much work is just a lot to take. And for that reason, I try not to have more than two claims open at any given time, if even that. I'm perfectly content with sacrificing a dollar or two of ad revenue if it means taking my time and never risking a third strike. And if you're just getting started, you need to reach a certain threshold to start earning money from YouTube anyway, so that strategy might even be more relevant to you. A link to those details for those curious is in the description as well. The last thing I wanted to cover on the copyright front is music. The song you've probably subconsciously tuned out by now that is playing in the background comes from a website called bensound.com, which specializes in a wide array of royalty-free music. Music companies as claimants are even more anal than the visual claims you might come across for reviews, so my advice? Don't even test it. 
I risked it a little bit with my Digimon video, and even with the volume turned super low, it was still sent into YouTube purgatory for so long that I had to give up on it and upload part 2 to a backup channel with different music. And trust me when I say, YouTube support is not supportive. Unless you know a living, breathing human being that happens to work for YouTube, you will almost never get the help you need from them, assuming they're not still gatekeeping that behind the YouTube Partners program, which is just a fancy way of saying you can now earn ad revenue from your videos. But that's a bit of an aside. The point is, unless you're going to make your own version of a song, and cover versions can still get legally murky as well, prioritize royalty-free music, also sometimes called license-free music, in your videos whenever possible. Worth noting is that video game music specifically sometimes serves as an exception to that, which is why so many video essayists are able to use Persona music, among other things, in their vids as backing tracks even if they're not talking about Persona or even doing a Let's Play. And you'll notice that I've done that as well in my Pokemon videos. I stay away from the anime exclusive songs since those operate differently, and instead use tracks like End's Castle theme, one of my favorite songs from any Pokemon game. But be cognizant of that too, as not all game music falls into that safety net. Some of it is owned by the performers and or their record labels, making it just as liable to be sniped as a Taylor Swift song. It's a sad, broken little system, but it's what you'll need to manage if you want to use this site for content creation. There is a silver lining, however. If you're looking to do Sentai or writer content, as I've delved into here and there in the past, Toei tends to not really bother me as much with that compared to PR, ironically enough. Since my content favors Rangers a bit more, I can't speak for the experiences of other content creators who are far more involved in that side of things, so if that sounds like you, your perspectives would be greatly appreciated down below. But even then, I haven't had to deal with as many fraudulent claims on my content since Hasbro took over. In fact, the last time it happened was when I dropped my Beast Morpher Season 2 review, which was obviously a couple years ago now. This could always change at any time and for any reason depending on the moods or whims of any given claimant, so as with everything else, be mindful of that as well. But the real irony? The one company that has given me the fewest headaches for my content is Disney itself. There are a number of other more important things they screw up, but not that. In the hope of ideally making this video a bit broader in the ways and means it can help out both current and future content creators, I wanted to close with a few bits of advice from my perspective having been doing it so long. If it helps, great. If you don't think it'll apply to you, throw it right out, no harm, no foul. I strongly believe that anyone can strive to do this with enough passion and focus. In fact, most of the resources you'd need to get started are reasonably cheap or free. But I'd strongly recommend that passion and a genuine desire to cover the subject matters that you do is what drives you. Because I'll tell you right now, there is not a lot of money in this unless you really make it big. I barely earn enough from YouTube to cover groceries, which is why this is a side gig for me while my big boy real world job pays for my ever increasing monthly bills. Focus on what you love and finding your voice. That won't happen overnight, but eventually, you'll just keep getting better at this and your writing, your narration, your editing will all feel like you, as opposed to the various influences that drove you towards this. Once you start getting ahead of steam, you'll start attracting people to your vision. And when you do, I want you to remember something, always. Place your own health and well-being above the possible needs and wants of your community. Being able to engage with your audience is a blessing, but it can also be a curse. I've seen everything across the spectrum, from passionate, paragraphs-long breakdowns that dig into a character better than I did, to death threats because I happened to like something some rando didn't. Never force yourself to go through the comments because you feel obligated to, a mistake I've made several times before. Do it because you want to. Do it because you're able to. Do it because at that given point in time, you can handle either extreme, even if neither extreme shows up this time. And never ever be too proud to delete a comment or remove a commenter who you don't want as part of your community. This is your space, which means should you choose, you can be responsible for cleaning it when word filth gums up the works. You can also hire a moderator that you trust to help out with this. That's usually more associated with Twitch, but even if you don't livestream on YouTube, 
mods can still be useful for that exact reason. There is a lot of other avenues we could discuss, but for now, the floor is open to all of you. I can't promise that I'll be able to answer every question posed to me here, and fellow content creators watching this, please feel free to add your own insight where possible, but I'll try. Technical questions tend to be beyond my grasp though, like you'll be very disappointed if you ask me about editing software or microphone setup. I use Windows Movie Maker, I'm as basic as it gets. But if you're really hell bent on getting an answer and YouTube doesn't notify me of your comment, which happens a lot actually, hit me up on Twitter or Discord. Also, because YouTube policies have been known to change from time to time, sometimes rather drastically, I'll try to keep the pinned comment updated with new info as it pertains to these topics, since their creator newsletter keeps me somewhat in the loop. So yeah, hope this video was or ends up being useful to some of you, and maybe at least interesting to others. Now if you'll excuse me, I've got a gang of space pirates to get back to so I can make that video I promised. So until then, thanks for watching.